Today on Dice to Pixels, Diablo 4 is coming to Game Pass. Raise your hand if you wasted money on that. Do I raise both because I bought it twice? That's touche. Yeah. Touche. Uh, yeah, there was a whole bunch of Xbox news. But first of all, I'm going to tell a little story. It's going to be very short and Ooh. it's going to be completely off topic. Ooh. Earlier today, I was eating spicy ramen. Oh. Okay. And one of the noodles dropped into the bowl and a little little blob of ramen came up and hit me directly in the eye. Oh. And it was one of the worst, like, spice in the eye events that I've ever had in my entire life. I actually thought that I was going to be recording with, like, a, uh, like pink eye tonight or something. But, uh, yeah. So that's when food story. fights back. <laughs> it, it, it was one of those, it made me think of the Seinfeld episode where uh, it's one in a million, Jerry, one in a million. <laughs> You'll shoot your eye out. <laughs> But yeah, uh, <laughs> fucking little little drop of ramen in my eyes. So that was. This is also ironic that it's the second episode in a row that we've talked about food to start it off. That's true. Yeah, <laughs> Wednesday's uh, video, Disney steaks. Uh, yeah. So, anyways, yes, uh, Xbox did their big thing, and hilariously enough, Nintendo delayed theirs because Xbox was doing theirs. Yeah. Which is, I mean, I don't think I would have you know, seeded that ground if I were them. See, uh, he's so excited about this. He's taking his sweat. Yeah, it's off. getting hot in here. Oh, yeah. The news is on fire. Uh, I'm not going to sing the song. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I, like that's actually to me, and I, this is probably just me, but to me, that seems like a real PR fuck up on Nintendo's part. To To basically like come out and say, hey, yeah, we're less important than Microsoft. If they're if they're hosting their event today, we won't because, you know. I mean, it's either looking at it that way or like, yeah, I guess that's really the only, no matter which way you twist it, that is the way that it kind of ends up being. It, it's it's what it looks like. Like, I, I think it makes sense from yeah. a strictly pragmatic point of view. You mm -hmm. don't need two events on the same day. But there's a certain look of it that's like, oh, we are obviously less important. It's not like, no, we're more important than you. So we're just going to go ahead and you'll lose viewers to us. Yeah. It's like, ooh, we better not do it at the same time because people won't watch ours. It's like, yeah, mm, that's, that's not the right message to say. No. <laughs> um, I'm surprised they don't have like coordinators that reach out to other major Well, they people. used to. Yeah. Um, I'm sure they knew. Well then, <laughs> um, it's hard to say. Um, I st I say this only because I think Xbox and Nintendo are kind of in cahoots. With I I think part of them, like I think there's talks going on in parts of the <clears throat> companies, but they're pretty big companies. It's it's entirely possible the that new they handheld, need to know. the new handheld is going to be called the X Boy. I'd buy that. <laughs> <laughs> um, so back in the day before E3. They absolutely like talked to each other to make sure that because it's mutual interest, right? It's like if we all just don't fuck each other over, then we don't have to worry about this. Yeah. If we start doing, you know, like, oh, well, we'll screw you over. And then next year we might get screwed over. So like they used to have all this coordinated, but then E3 happened and they sort of all stopped doing their own thing for a long time. Mm -hmm. Now they've been back to it long enough now that you'd think they had, yeah it's been a few years then again maybe they just didn't really have that many overlaps i bet going forward they're gonna have some coordination because mm -hmm. no regardless of whether nintendo sort of outwardly acknowledges that this was a bit of a pr hit and i don't think it'll cause them any problem no. but somebody in nintendo recognizes that this isn't a great look no like it won't hurt them it's not a big deal but it's not a great look no um, so going forward, I suspect there will be more coordination. Happening. I feel like though, this isn't the first time that two, like two major gaming companies have had announcement type things going on, like really, really, really close together, like within. Well, the, the rebuttal announcement is very common. Ah, that's probably what um, I'm thinking of then. Usually they try not to do it on the same day for mm -hmm. a couple of reasons. So one of the tactics that they'll play and Nintendo, if they do it tomorrow, yeah. Uh, we're filming this on Thursday, by the way, instead of our usual Friday. So it's possible that by the time you see this, Nintendo Direct has already happened. I don't know if they gave a date for when it's postponed to. Uh, I just said middle of February. Oh, okay. So like a little while. Um, they haven't, so they haven't come out and said it was postponed, but uh, Jeff Grubb's reporting that it's been postponed because of the Xbox. Yeah, yeah. So. And and I, I believe that. I mean, middle of February, we're, we're there. So yeah. may, maybe they were intending to do it tomorrow and I'm talking <laughs> out of my ass. I don't know. But... Um, 
doing it very shortly after the after your competitor is mm. pretty is like a common tactic. It's a bit of a shitty tactic, but uh, it allows you to hopefully steal their news cycle. Which is why the industries kind of standardize around like releasing news on a Friday because mm -hmm. A, bad news gets, you know, people forget it over the weekend. And B, if you do it on Friday, it's hard for anybody to like steal your news cycle yeah. after that. Uh, if you do it on a Thursday, somebody can swoop in on a Friday mm -hmm. and like steal your news cycle. And in fairness, since people are being bitches about the Xbox announcements, maybe that's the plan. Maybe Nintendo will do theirs on Friday and uh, just to steal the bad news cycle and and cover for Microsoft. Maybe they're maybe. really, maybe they're like really in cahoots. And oh, I think we just switched around to like kind of prove Chad's point there. Yeah. I mean, hey, if that Ex happens, boy. Oracle. <laughs> 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 um, but yeah, so anyways, to, on to what they actually announced. Uh, so the big one. Uh, they're bringing four, is it, games yeah, to well, other consoles? Well, we, we we haven't really gone off yet on Diablo 4 being on Game Pass. No, well, let's <laughs> let's cover that next. Okay. Let's let's talk about the exclusive thing first. All right, yeah. So uh, they, they haven't come out and announced uh, which four games are coming, but speculation uh, says that um, Hi-Fi Rush, which is one of the one of the best games from last year, in my opinion, and in the industry's opinion, uh, that's going to be coming to the Switch and PS5, as well as Grounded, which uh, you two played quite a fair bit of. Yeah, it was had, all right. Yeah, had a unique, a unique, uh, a unique um, Hun setting. Yeah, Honey, yeah. I Shrunk the Kids. Yeah. yeah. Um, also, Sea of Thieves. Um, I find that one kind of ironic with Skull and Bones just around the corner. Mm -hmm. And uh, Pentiment. Yeah. Is the other one. That's the four that's going to go be going multi platform. These, these are the rumored ones. Rumored, There's yeah. Not guaranteed yet. But. Honestly, if you didn't play Hi Fi Rush uh, before, do you owe yourself to, a favor to play it now? Because the gameplay is it's really unique. You're playing a hack and slash, like Devil May Cry ish uh, game, but you have to stay in, you have to attack to the beat of like the song that plays the music is fantastic yeah, it's, it's a rhythm shooter except it's not necessarily a shooter but yeah but it's it's a great game so that one's that one will be fun i'm yeah. glad that more people are gonna get the chance to play that yeah um what surprised me about this was because of course people have been the rumor mill has been had this for a little while that you know microsoft exclusives are no longer exclusive and i was i was saying this over dinner so chad and sarah have heard this but uh I don't get the the uproar around this because uh, exclusives in all other media, basically, for a very long time, exclusive has rarely meant forever. Exclusive for most media, for most of the history of exclusives has meant like a month or a year or something like that. It's not like, oh, you'll never get this on another platform or or another newspaper or anything else. Like you you, you know, nobody else will ever interview person X. Yeah. It's always like you get the first kick at the can and then a week later we'll go and interview. We'll we'll let, you know, whoever else interview us. Or you get a year's worth of uh, you know, exclusivity on on Xbox and then we'll open it mm. up. Now I get that these are first party titles, which is theoretically what makes a difference. That's but, the, yeah, that's the that those are the things that are supposed to entice you to play on that particular platform. But I mean, <clears throat> all of these have been out for a year. Hi Fi Rush, admittedly, just like, it's barely. Just but by the time before. it comes out on the console, it will have been comfortably mm -hmm. over a year. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's still a pretty strong incentive to buy the console. Like, if you really care about a game. A year is a long fucking yeah. time. Well, well like and, and when Chad and I first were starting to see each other, that's when the first um, Lara Croft remake game came yeah. out. Uh, and no, it was the sequel. Was oh, it, no, yeah, no, it was, it was the, the first one. Was it the first one? Yeah. I thought it was the sequel. No, because it doesn't matter. Yeah, anyway. <laughs> there was a Lara Croft game that came out and I literally bought an Xbox one just so I could play the game. 100%. And then afterwards I returned it. <laughs> yeah. And I think I got a PS4. You got a PS4 yeah. because you kept playing the PS4. So. Um, but yeah, like the I I get that these are different because they're first parties, but at the same time, like exclusivity, this this like gaming industry thing where exclusivity means forever is like that's not a thing. That's very rare. That is by far the exception. So people are making a big deal out of this, and I'm just kind of over here thinking like, 
who fucking cares? Mm. It, you still got it for a year exclusive. That's a long goddamn time. Apart from emulation, I think Nintendo properties are like the only things that you can only play on like Nintendo mm-hmm. systems. Yeah. 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 And Nintendo has always done that. And like, okay, cool. That's fine. Um, I mean, Apple is is similar in some, like it's a walled garden, right? Yeah. Like this runs on Nintendos and nothing else. You know, this runs on iPhones and nothing else sort of thing. Um, but when you look at the broader media, like I use the example of the Audible original audiobooks, mm-hmm. they release them and then like after six months. So if you want it when it comes out, you buy it on Audible. Whether you're an audiobook junkie or not, you buy it on Audible. But after six months, there's print versions available. You can go to Amazon and get it. That's normal. That's how exclusives normally work. So it's very odd to me that people are are treating this as such a big deal. I get that it kind of is in the gaming sphere, but only because it was weird before, not because this is crazy. Yeah. I'll do a quick shout out to one book our friend uh, Sam told us about called How to Defeat a Demon King in 10 Easy Steps. That is an Audible original. The audiobook is fantastic for that, and you can get the print version. I recommend it to everybody, if you're a gamer, to read or listen to this book. I'll have to pick it up. Carrying on. Yep. Um, I was... <laughs> no, that's good. I'll pick it up. I, I don't know if it's, this is just my misunderstanding of what a console exclusive is, but you can get Pentiment and High Fry Rush and grounded all on steam so yeah. is it because because it's you can play on windows or whatever? yeah well this is another where area where like it's it's weird right because when they talk about exclusives very often they mean it won't be on playstation like it'll be yeah. on xbox but not playstation or it'll be on nintendo but not the other two that yeah very often you can play it on pc too yeah so it's not really exclusive <laughs> no so um, i think i think the exclusivity of those games now are going to be the fact that they're on Game Pass. So if, yes. you, pay, if you play them on an Xbox mm-hmm. and you have Game Pass, you're not spending like $80, $90 to get them. Right. And and that <clears> makes <throat> sense. Like this is the same sort of thing like a Netflix original. It's not the Netflix, you know, doesn't want to give that to other companies, uh, like to Amazon Prime Streaming, for instance, mm-hmm. because uh, they're against giving them content. It's because... The more content Netflix has, the better because it's a subscription service. Yes. And so for something like Game Pass, that makes sense. For for something that you're like, we're spending the upfront money to get this available on our subscription platform. So we don't want other people to have it for mm-hmm. at least a good while. Yeah. That makes perfect sense. That's always been a thing. But a lot of the, like these games are not whether they're on Game Pass or not, mm-hmm. they're not live service. They're not subscription games. No. Uh, yes, Hi-Fi Rush. And I think all of these came to Game Pass. So yes. there's a certain amount of that. Hi-Fi Rush debuted on Game Pass. Right, I right. Think but like Pentiment might have as well. I think I think most of these, most yeah. of the ones that people are talking about, I think almost all of them did. I think even mm. Sea of Thieves might have too. I'm not it's sure. It's still on. They're, they're yeah, oh, still it's still on. there. Yeah. Yeah. But like that's a good justification for not allowing it to be part of uh, like PS Plus. Yeah. That's not a reasonable uh, thing to prevent it from being played on PlayStation. So that's where the exclusivity is weird to me. Like if it was like, hey, these are Game Pass exclusives. You can play them wherever you want, but you can't, like they won't be on PS Plus. I get that. That's mm-hmm. pretty standard. But preventing it from being on the console at all, that's just, that's just preventing you from making more money. Yeah. Which is basically what Phil Schiller said. Yeah. He was like, we... We need to get more players, players, not just milk the existing players for more money. We need more mm-hmm. people. Mm-hmm. And the way we're going to get more people is by expanding Branding our it. offerings. Yeah. Um, this is all very reasonable, but this is all also like most other industries already worked this way. This isn't weird to me. It's it's weird that it didn't work this way before. So uh, Yeah. In my I, mind, I'm, in, I'm of the mindset where it's like, man, no, no, like you're getting unique experiences that you couldn't play before and you're going to be able to play these now on PlayStation. Yeah. Why are you like, grumpy about this? Yeah. Th- this is great. Like this is going to be fucking good, you know? Yeah. So yeah. 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 Super weird. But, but yeah, um, I really wish I had like 130 bucks back in my pocket oh now. Oh my God. Yeah. Fucking Diablo 4. I bought two copies of it. <laughs> <laughs> like 
Oh man. So so this is a this is a perfect example where normally my attitude to this would be, well, fuck it, I got to play the game for a year. I mean, it, it, I, it didn't. hasn't been a year. It's it was June, June sixth, and it's coming out on March twenty eighth. So it's almost a year, close enough. Yeah. Um, but it was a bad game when it was released, and now it's just finally starting to get good, and now it's going to be free. And it's like, oh, you bastard. Yeah, <laughs> we and we touched on this. Um, during dinner it's like i wonder what the player base is like yeah they're hurting active online users and stuff because i know the three of us we played through the the base game and got to the end game well you know you didn't no i didn't i didn't finish we did yeah so you and i did yeah um but i mean once we like we did a bit of the end game stuff and and it was just like yeah this this fucking boring (laughs) yeah and that's been pretty much the experience from Basically, everyone I personally know that has the game pretty much had the mm-hmm. same reaction where they're like, it was too long. So I was kind of done with it by the time I got to the real game. Yeah. Um, and even a lot of the people that that I work with, they're all like, yeah, no, dude, I, 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 I either didn't finish it or yeah, I finished it and that was it. And did you play any of the seasonal content? No, I didn't bother. I wasn't interested. Yeah. Um, I assume what will be happening is it'll be coming to Game Pass as the base game, but you'll still have to pay for the season passes to partake. I mean, that makes... I, I, it would I be weird if it worked any other way. I think any other game that is like that, like yeah. any live service on Game Pass, that's basically how yeah, it works. It's, it's I mean, the, who doesn't want to spend 30 bucks to have their freaking hometown portal a different color? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's such a Blizzard thing. <laughs> I... I can't put myself in the mental state to even consider that as something I would spend any money on, let alone 30 goddamn yeah. dollars. <laughs> uh, I don't know. People are weird, yeah. man. It makes me glad that, you know, a, a game with a simple premise like Helldivers 2. Yeah. Right? You you go down into uh, onto a planet and you have objectives. And you fill those objectives and you have bonus objectives and all this other stuff. And the action's intense. It's nuts. It's different from from uh, from game to game. Yeah. But the fundamental gameplay loop is fun. It's really, really fun. It's and it's fucking witty, dude. The opening cinematic. You could watch that. <laughs> oh alone. yeah. No, well it, it's it's a lot like the first one in that regard. Yeah. Like it's it's very like tongue it's, in cheek and it's very funny. It's great. It is absolutely yeah. great. And, and whereas Diablo Four, which took itself very seriously. Yeah. Um and just the pacing of it was so so like that first chapter it was, was weird. such a fucking slog. It was oh. weird. Yeah. The end, like that, that first boss, I think it was the first, the end of the first chapter, the boss was like way too hard for what yeah. it was. Yeah. Um, Helldiver Scoot 2 is, uh, is cool. We have yet to play together, um, but uh, it's cool. I still think the original had, I think it had a bit more charm, but like they did a pretty good job. Like 2 is, is fun. Um, I, I've seen a lot of reactions in the, Sorry, uh, in our, in my, uh, forever gaming clan there, um, people that have played the first one and are playing the second one and they're preferring it over the original. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I think it also depends on what style of game you like yeah. too. Yeah. There's definitely some of that. Um, and to be fair, I mean, two is, two is more frantic in some ways, um, and uh, and it has a little like they they used the additional uh, degrees of freedom well. Um, I think the original was more charming though. Like mm-hmm. there was something very, very like I don't know it almost more cinematic about it's kind of like RimWorld where RimWorld you get some of the craziest fucking stories out of RimWorld mm-hmm. and Dwarf Fortress and stuff like that. I felt like that happened more in Helldivers. I think because it didn't take itself as seriously. Not that Helldivers 2 actually takes itself seriously, but it's it it feels a little more serious because it's full 3D and and it's like it feels like a grown-up shooter. Mm-hmm. Whereas the original felt like a cartoon. Yeah. Like it felt mm-hmm. like you were playing 
Bugs Bunny and his friends go and and play Starship Troopers. I think I think they've done a little bit more of a hybrid with this one yeah. in, in terms of that because it does feel like the grown up adult shooter. Yeah. But if you've ever seen Starship Troopers, there's so much Starship Troopers humor in it. Oh, absolutely! Like, and most so, of that so comes much. from the first one. Yeah. Like, most of that is just continue like Cup of Liberty and everything. Like that's all from the original. Yeah. Um, and it's great. It's mm-hmm. wonderful. And that's why, like, when I say it takes it, like, it doesn't actually take itself seriously. Yeah. Um, but, like, the gameplay is a little more serious. Yeah. Um, which is not a, I'm not saying it's a bad no. thing by any means, but I found the first one more charming. The first yeah. one felt like an indie, the new one, not so much, which is not a bad thing. Mm-hmm. It's just. Much how we all preferred Diablo 3 over Diablo 4. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, yeah. I, I, there, so. I may still grow to, to like two more. Part of the problem is I haven't played, like, Helldivers 1, I played couch co-op with people. Mm-hmm. And the fact that that's not a, a, a reasonable thing to do. Like someday we'll get some people over and we'll do like a, a land party yeah. sort of thing. Because um, that's those are my favorite memories from Helldivers yeah. 1 was in the same room playing with people. Uh, and I haven't experienced that with 2. So no matter how good it is, it's not going to compare. You have an experience too. Yeah. You haven't played two yet. Yeah, yeah. Oh, you have. Yeah, I picked it up. Oh, did you? Oh, yeah. Okay. It's. Uh... You have an experience too with me. <laughs> no, no. We have. We need to play together. I've been too yeah. busy. I, I picked yeah. it up. I've only well, played I've, like yeah. one, one or two rounds. But... I've like I, I haven't played it as much as I want because I've been, like, just trying to learn songs from a band that I might be becoming a part yeah. of. So. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> We've all got some yeah, shit going some on. Shit right? going yeah. on. Um. No, we we definitely need to play like the two of us for sure. Um. Because that's what, that's how it's meant to be played. Yeah. Like that's really what the game is, and I haven't had that experience with two yet. So it's kind of like I also haven't experienced much of it. Like I, I literally I played like two rounds. Mm-hmm. So I, you know, take anything I'm saying about it with a grain of salt. Yeah. But uh, basically, what we're saying oh, is oh, Sarah's man. destroying. Sorry, the world. I, I had to reach my hand up because I remembered when Chad was doing the tutorial and there was the live ammo section. Oh yeah. In oh yeah, yeah. He ran yeah. out and immediately died. Yeah. yeah. Straight from Starship. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. The yeah. one the one uh you walk up to this device and it basically stabs you in the throat. Oh yeah. yeah. It's fucking hilarious. <laughs> I love it. Yeah, it's it's it, fun. Um the humor is absolutely on oh. point yeah. always with those guys. But basically what we're saying is we're really pissed off that Diablo 4 is coming to Game Pass. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, I am and I'm not. Uh, like honestly, I'd kind of written it off as a mediocre purchase yeah. anyways, so it, I'm only so salty about it. Yeah. But at the same time like yeah, there's a reason it's coming to Game Pass. Yeah. They're clearly hurting for players. They need something. So, yeah. so all right. So, what do we want to talk about? We got uh, we got a few minutes left, like five minutes left. Oh yeah, right. Oh, I, you wanted to talk about this next gen Xbox aims to be a uh, largest technical leap. I just I just had a you, joke about it. Yeah. Oh okay. Uh, so so they they're talking about the next gen Xbox. I forget the exact words. You you just said it, it was basically Which, it's going to be the biggest leap forward in technology. Yeah, the next gen Xbox aims to be the largest technical leap you've ever seen. Which going to another topic, uh, Sony announced that the PlayStation is nearing the end of its life cycle, yeah. and I'm like. Uh, what? <laughs> yeah. Uh, the next Xbox is just going to be a PC. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's going to be the biggest technological I thought, leap forward. I thought when they did this generation, they had just said basically next generation is just going to be PCs. Well, it it is. Like whether they admit it or not, like we're basically there already. Yeah. Um, I wouldn't be surprised... If the next gen, the biggest technological leap, I could be totally wrong. They may be talking about AI or some bullshit, but I wouldn't be shocked if it has like an upgrade path built into it so that you don't have to buy an entirely new console every time. Mm. Uh, And at that point, it's a PC. Yeah. (laughs) I don't know. I think Um, the largest technical, the largest technical leap I would ever see is a fucking holodeck. Wow. <laughs> sure. Like I'm talking Star Trek next generation yeah. level yeah. freaking Harold Holiday. Yeah, wow. Well. <laughs> That's going to be a while. Just slash physically impossible. In, <laughs> instead of it all looking like real life, just make it all look like Minecraft. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, I'd be interested in knowing more about this, but like there's one of two paths. Either it's actually going to be super cool and it's going to be like legitimately more powerful or something, which... On the one hand, that's cool. On the other hand, like you can already do that. It's called a PC. Mm-hmm. 
or they're leaning hard into AI and it's going to have like a lot of onboard AI processing capabilities or something so that they can have like AI powered NPCs and stuff. Yeah. Ooh, Skynet box. Could, yeah, right. Uh, could be either way. Could be something totally different, but uh, I kind of hope they're leaning towards making it into a PC of some sort because, I mean, the Steam box was a great idea. Steam yeah. machine. Yeah. They just never really, I'm still counting on it, on them reviving that this year. We'll see if I'm right about that. Well, if the next Xbox ends in either 800 or 1,000, they're probably sending it back in time to get John Connor. Yeah. Well, cool. I mean, is there a John Connor in the past? Oh, we'll have, I don't know. Probably. We'll have to dig up some. De- yeah, but there's got to be one somewhere. Yeah, right? You know, yep. with all this AI shit, you know, John Connor's just sitting there they're going like, what the fuck are you all doing? Man? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> some poor bastard named John Connor is like, oh, man. <laughs> Did they not watch the movies? <laughs> All right, we'll uh, we'll leave it there, and uh, we love you so much. We'll see you again on Wednesday or Saturday, one of the two. One or the other. Have a good week.